So the quote I'd like to share with you today is from Neville Goddard's book, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And I'll just read it to you now. This quote starts, You rise to a higher level of consciousness by taking your attention away from your present limitations and placing it upon that which you desire to be. Do not attempt this in daydreaming or wishful thinking, but in a positive manner. Claim yourself to be the thing desired. I am that. No sacrifice, no diet, no human tricks. All that is asked of you is to accept your desire. If you dare claim it, you will express it. So the first point that we'll raise here is to do with attention and where we are placing our attention. And this is something we should always be aware of. This is, a, this is the true art of being aware. We need to be aware of where our attention is placed right now. And he's telling us that if we wish to raise our consciousness, then we must take our attention away from any present limitations or circumstances and place it upon that which we desire to become, that which we desire to be. This is the first step, to shift our attention. And it's a very simple step, but it's one that people often miss. People will often focus solely on present limitations and present circumstances. So if they are currently in a tight situation or one where a bill's coming up that they have to pay or whatever it might be, then they remain focused on that limitation instead of expanding their outlook to one that can see that bill being paid or that circumstance being resolved. They are unable to shift their attention from the limitation to shift on to the actual positive outcome they wish to see come into their lives. And this is really crucial advice, and we must always remember this. You must always ask yourself this question, where are you currently placing your attention? What are you focused on? And it might be quite shocking to you to see that perhaps these unfavourable circumstances you're currently facing, you are solely focused on those unfavourable circumstances. And he's asking us to shift ourselves away from this, to see a, the bigger picture, if you like. Then Neville goes on to say, do not attempt to do this in daydreaming or wishful thinking, but in a positive manner. Well, this comes back to something that Neville told us time and time again, really. He wanted to get us out of this place where we did things half-heartedly. And he wanted to get us to this place where we did things wholeheartedly. And this is a really crucial point. You know, are we doing things half-heartedly when we try to change? When we try to shift our attention, are we doing it in a half-hearted manner? Well, of course, as we often find in life, when we do things half-heartedly, they very rarely change. But if we do things with conviction, we do things wholeheartedly, then we notice that things do change. And we can notice a positive shift from this when we do something sincerely. I think sincerely is a good word to use here, actually. Sincerity is a crucial part of this process. And it's another good question to ask yourself. Are you sincere in your ambition to change? Are you sincere in your ambition to shift your attention to what you want to focus upon? This, these are all great questions to ask yourself again. But if we want to make a change, we must really mean it. He's saying this is what he's telling us here. We need to really mean it. And this is why it was crucial always to feel the wish fulfilled because this is what this communicates when we feel something as the truth and when we feel it in a convicting manner then we really mean business we're doing it in a wholehearted manner we're doing it with sincerity and this is a really powerful component again of Neville's teachings then Neville goes on to say claim yourself to be the thing desired I am that no sacrifice, no diet, no human tricks. Now, this is really interesting because what he's telling us here is that the method is not the important component of this. The important component of this is getting us to this place where we can sincerely say 
with feeling behind it. I am that, i.e. I am rich, I am successful, I am loved, I am successful in relationships. Whatever it might be, we need to get to that place where we can say that without feeling we are lying. We need to say this, I am that, with a feeling of truth behind it, that it is possible that it is something we can have in our lives. This is what he is telling us here. He's telling us we need to believe. We need to generate this belief. And when we say, I am rich and we believe it, it will become a reality. It really is this simple. And he ends the quote by saying, all that is asked of you is to accept your desire. If you dare to claim it, you will express it. So, I'm going to emphasize the word dare here because this is a really good one. He's saying dare, so he's asking us here to take this leap of faith, this leap of belief, to dare ourselves to live in the wish fulfilled, to feel it as a living reality right now. And he also makes a very, very good point when he says that the only important component is to accept your desire. This is the end point again. This is belief. We use all of these different words, but we need to get to this place of acceptance. And this is another great term to use here. We need to get to this place where we can accept the idea that we can become the person we want to be. Whatever a specific idea that is, we need to be able to accept it. And if you say to yourself, if you pose the question to yourself regarding something you want to become, and it feels ridiculous to you still, then of course it's very unlikely to become a living reality in your life. But if you can get to the place where you suggest to yourself the thing you want to be or the, the specific goal you have, and it feels very likely, it feels very possible to you, that means you have moved into a state of acceptance. And this is a really powerful understanding of the teachings again that you you need to get to this place where you can accept your desire as a living reality and he's saying and to finish off if you dare to claim it if you dare to claim this if you dare to believe it you will express it this is the impression you are making this claim you are making is an impression and that will express itself in your life so whatever you dare to claim of yourself will become expressed in your everyday reality. And to summarize today's message, I just want to share with you how you actually implement this in your everyday life. And it's actually quite straightforward, but it does require a level of discipline. And it involves basically, every time you get a desire, every time a desire arises in your mind, I should say, you need to claim it in that moment, in that instant. And you do this by identifying with it. As Neville says here, you claim I am that. You claim I am that. Whatever the specific desire is. And it's very, very important to make this process a sincere one. So you want to feel that when you do it. You don't just say it half-heartedly. You say it with complete conviction and meaning. You fully identify yourself with that. And you fully accept your desire as a present reality right here and right now. This is the process and if you do this, you will make that deep impression on the subconscious mind. If you do it with feeling behind it, you will make that deep impression and that will express itself in your reality. And that is the long and short of this method really. It's a very straightforward one, but it does require that level of discipline to do this. And this is why it can be quite tricky for some but it's also a very effective method if it's implemented properly. If you implement it with a deep level of conviction behind it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful to you today. Thanks very much. Bye for now.